To install the Raspberry Pi Pico for the first time on our computer's operating system. Let's press the boot SEL button on the board. With the button pressed, let's connect the board to our computer, through the USB cable. After connecting it, we can release the button. In my case, Windows will open the board's file window, recognizing it as an external storage unit with the name RPI, RPI2. Just to verify, we can enter the device manager, and although the operating system recognizes the Pico board as an external storage unit, it tells us as a warning that it still does not recognize it as a development board through a COM port. Then, in the files that are included in the Pico board, we access the index file, which will take us through the internet to the Raspberry Pi documentation. Here, we search and open the MicroPython link. Then we look for the link to download the MicroPython UF2 file, and click on the link for the Raspberry Pi Pico. Once the file is downloaded to our computer, we go to its location, copy the file from here, and paste it into the location of the Pico board. After this action, the Pico board will reboot automatically, and from this moment on you will be running MicroPython on your system. We can see in the Disk Drive Explorer that our operating system no longer recognizes it as an external storage unit. And we can open the device manager to see that the board is recognized as a USB serial device, in our case a development board. From this moment, we can now install the development environment with which we will program our board. To do this, we go to the Internet Explorer, and the search engine of our choice, type Thani Phyton Download. And let's access the official link of the Thani software from the Thani.org Foundation, we download the software for our operating system, in my case Windows 64 bits. Let's follow the instructions of the installation wizard, and create an icon on the desktop as a shortcut. Once the installation is complete, let's open the Thani software through the icon on our desktop. Since the MicroPython programming language is running directly on the Pico board, unlike for example what we do in the Arduino IDE with the compiler or verifier, in this case we will look for an interpreter. To do this we go to the Run tab, then Configure Interpreter. We select the appropriate interpreter, in this case the MicroPython one for the Raspberry Pi Pico, and we select the COM port, where our operating system recognizes the board, in my case COM3. We click on OK to accept, and in the code editor, we start our program, in this case to blink the green LED built into the Pico board. We import the sleep library. We import the pin library. We declare the LED variable as a digital output associating it to pin 25 of the board, which has a green LED incorporated. We run an indefinite cyclic structure with while. We change the state of the LED with the toggle method, this method allows us to vary the state of the pin based on its current logical state. If it is low, it changes it to high, and if it is high, it changes it to low. To finish the code, we place a delay of 1 second using the sleep method, and click on run the script. And now we can see the LED flashing on the Pico board. If we click on the save icon, a window is displayed with two options, we click on Save on Raspberry Pi Pico. It shows us a message that says that the board is busy, so it cannot save the file. Then we stop the execution of the program, and save again, and select the Pico board. We give the file a name, in this case I will put the name Blink, click on OK, and click on Yes. We click on Run the current script, and at this moment our file or script is saved on the Pico board, and running to blink the LED. Now, let's disconnect the board from the USB cable, and connect it again. We can see that the LED does not continue flashing after this action. This is because, even though our file with the name blink is saved on the Pico board, when electrically starting the board, it does not know which file to start its execution from. Next, we go to View. Files. The Files window is displayed, and here we can see that we have the file with the name Blink stored on the Pico board. I am going to change the LED flashing speed, I am going to set less timeout, say 0.1 seconds. And I'm going to go to File. Save As. Then I will select the Raspberry Pi Pico again, but this time, I will save the script with the name Main. In this way, the Pico board will know which script to start its execution with, once it is energized. In the file window, select the script with the name main, and click run. 
and we can already see flashing on the Pico board. We can close the Thani software, and on the Pico board, we disconnect the USB cable for a couple of seconds, and connect it again. And we can now see that the LED continues to flash after this action, as programmed, indicating that the Pico board is operating in standalone mode as required. I hope this video has been useful to you, subscribe to the channel and activate the bell for new content.